Welcome to this video lecture on the vascular system, where we will discuss the important histological elements of arteries, veins, and capillaries, guiding you through these topics. Let us start at the heart of the vascular system, which is in fact the heart. I would be remiss if I didn't draw the heart in this lecture, so let me do that now. I will note that even though you might have a desire to learn about the heart with me today, I will not be focusing on the heart during this lecture. Rather, we will be discussing all the vasculature that carries the five and a half liters of blood and supplies vital nutrients to every cell in our body. There are two main types of tubing in the human body, arteries and veins. Arteries will be drawn in red in my depiction of the heart here, and veins will be in blue. Arteries carry blood away from the heart, while veins carry blood back to the heart after passing through capillary beds. For this reason, it means that the pressure in the arteries is going to far exceed the pressure in the veins. Therefore, arteries and veins must adequately accommodate for this difference in blood flow dynamics. Let's start by taking a look at some different types of arteries and explore their histological makeup and how they fulfill the needs of the body. The largest arteries coming directly off the heart, such as the aorta, are called elastic arteries. These arteries are actually quite thick, elastic as in the name, and durable. All of the body's vasculature, with the exception of capillaries, have three layers, and these are the tunica interna, or tunica intima, tunica media, and tunica externa. The thickness of each of these layers differ between artery type and veins, and these differences reflect the needs of each part of the vasculature. The elastic arteries, for example, have a single layer of endothelial cells which comprise the tunica interna. A thick layer of tunica media is present, as seen here, and there is additionally a connective tissue layer of tunica externa present as well on the outside, as shown in blue. The elastic fibers present in the elastic arteries are arranged in sheets that alternate with smooth muscle and the tunica media to provide the structural integrity of these arteries. I will draw the elastic fibers here in blue. Elastic arteries also have two additional layers of elastic fiber bands between the tunica interna and media, as well as the tunica media and externa, called the internal lamina and external lamina, respectively. Now let's take a look at the makeup of muscular arteries, which comprise the outbranching of elastic arteries. The overall thickness of the muscular arteries is thinner than that of elastic arteries, as the blood pressure is less in this part of the body. Once again, there are three layers to this type of artery as well, the tunica intima, tunica media, and tunica externa. The muscular arteries have a single layer of tunica intima, a medium thickness layer of tunica media, as shown here, and a variable thickness layer of tunica externa. These muscular arteries also contain scattered elastic fibers within the tunica media and a thin external and internal lamina, like the elastic arteries, but they are less prominent. The last type of artery that we will be discussing in this lecture is an arterial. Let's go ahead and zoom in on an arterial here. The arterial is in fact the smallest artery and is between one to five tenths of a millimeter in diameter. Even though the arterial is so much more narrow than the other arteries we've mentioned previously, it still has the three layers, the tunica intima, tunica media, and tunica externa. The arterial has a very narrow endothelia tunica intima. It has a one to three cell layer thick tunica media, which lacks elastic fibers, and it also contains a thin tunica externa. The arterioles do not contain an external or internal lamina like the muscular or elastic arteries. Now that we have discussed the arteries in great detail, let's take a moment to explore the histology of veins. As mentioned, veins are not required to withstand the same high pressure environments like arteries, and thus they have a very different composition. Veins, however, still contain the three tunica layers as mentioned previously. This depiction of veins will be applicable for all of the vein sizes, and I will therefore discuss all of veins together. Veins still have a single layer of endothelial cells that compose the tunica intima, which I've drawn in here. They have a tunica media, which is thinner than what we've seen previously, and it also has an outer coating of connective tissue that's made of tunica externa. 
Notice that there are no elastic fibers in veins, and since they have a thinner tunica media, they can have a floppy feel on gross examination, and may look collapsed when you look at them on histological slides. Since veins are relatively inelastic and experience low blood pressure, an important feature that veins have to help return blood to the heart are valves. These valves prevent backflow of blood and are specific to veins. No other vasculature in the body other than the heart has valves. In this second part of the lecture, we are going to focus now on capillaries. There are three types of capillaries that you should be familiar with. Continuous or tight capillaries, fenestrated, and discontinuous capillaries. Capillaries have extremely thin walls to allow for exchange of fluid, ions, and molecules between the blood and the adjacent tissues. Although all capillaries serve this function, a different structure to accommodate the needs of the tissue they are integrated with. Let us take a closer look at continuous or tight capillaries. These capillaries consist of a continuous layer of epithelial cells, with many tight junctions between these cells, and a continuous basal lamina. These capillaries are found in areas of the body where exchange from the blood needs to be tightly regulated. Some examples of where continuous capillaries are found are in the skeletal muscles, the thymus, and the central nervous system, such as the brain. To help you remember that the brain has continuous or tight capillaries within its structure, I will draw in a brain at the top of the page here. Now we are going to move down the page and focus on the second capillary, the fenestrated capillary. These capillaries are different than the continuous capillaries that we discussed previously. And I'm going to let you watch this come to life and think about what makes it different. Fenestrated capillaries, as you may have noticed, have microscopic pores or fenestrations in their endothelial layer. However, they have a continuous basal lamina. These capillaries are found in areas where more rapid exchange of larger, more complex molecules is needed, which is facilitated by the pores in the epithelium. Within the fenestrated capillary category, there are two subtypes, with diaphragms and without diaphragms. The diaphragms shown here are thinner than the plasma membrane and can be found covering the pores of the endothelium in fenestrated capillaries. Fenestrated capillaries with diaphragms can be found in the intestines and in endocrine organs, while fenestrated capillaries without diaphragms are only found in the renal glomerulus. I have drawn in a kidney here to remind you of this important connection. Lastly, we are going to cover discontinuous capillaries. These capillaries also have a fenestrated epithelium, as shown here, and they do not contain diaphragms. Um, the basal lamina is also very incomplete, as shown here. Discontinuous capillaries are found where free exchange of substances are needed, for example, in the liver, the bone marrow, and the spleen. And with that, we are completed with this overview of the vascular system. I would like to take a moment, however, to step back and appreciate all we have learned in this mini lecture. We talked about the arteries and veins and their histological structure on cross section. Arteries need to withstand greater pressure than veins, so they have more elastic and pressure resistant construction. We talked about elastic arteries, muscular arteries, arterioles, as well as veins and discuss their three layers, the tunica intima, tunica media, and tunica externa. Arteries typically have thicker tunica media than veins, and all of the arteries, with the exception of arterioles, have elastic fibers to provide greater strength and flexibility to these structures. Veins have periodic valves to encourage blood movement back to the heart. We finish by talking about the three types of capillaries, continuous or tight, fenestrated, and discontinuous capillaries. The location of these capillaries is often related to the needs of the tissue they are supplying, and make sure you review the types of tissue they supply, as this is important. For example, that continuous capillaries supply the brain, and the renal glomerulus has fenestrated capillaries without diaphragms. 
Thanks again for joining me for this lecture, and I look forward to seeing you again in the next video.